Yo, what's up guys? Chris here and today I want to do a video about tips on having a more healthy relationship with the EDC hobby. Too many times I've seen people have an unhealthy relationship with the EDC hobby and it can become very toxic and unhealthy in your everyday life, very stressful, it can create anxiety um, and just not be very good and I want to go over some tips from somebody who has been in the EDC hobby for a little over 10 years uh, I've been in the hobby now for a very long time way before I was on YouTube I just want to share some tips with you that I've learned along the way that could possibly help people I hope this reaches people and um, I just hope that you guys could take something from this from somebody who has experienced it all I've been there I've done it all and I just hope this reaches people so let's get into it so number one is set a budget I've seen too many times people just buying 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 and then before you know it they're having to turn around and sell more than half of what they bought set a budget for yourself if you can't afford something then look at your collection and sell something in order to try to fund that or come up with like a side hustle or something that you could do. All this is disposable income, guys. You should not be taking anything out of your income that you're using to provide for your family or yourself. You should not be taking gas money out of your car to pay for knives or EDC gear. You should not be taking food out of the home to pay for knives or gear. And I know this goes without saying, but I have heard horror stories and it's a real thing. Uh, and we live in a world now where we have Afterpay, Sezzle, Zip, and all these things. And it can be, I have fell down that rabbit hole myself. And it can be very, very hard. Um, and easy at the same time to fall down that because something that is $300 but when you're paying in four installments and it turns into $75 well that's easy to make but then when you make multiple payments on different things and you turn into $200 every two weeks on multiple payments it could be a lot and that can screw up a lot of people financially so don't get stuck down that rabbit hole make a budget and stick with it do not spend beyond that find something to sell to try to cover what you are purchasing don't get caught up in all that crap just make a budget i can't stress that enough make a budget if it's out of your budget again try to find something to sell work overtime try to come up with a side hustle we live in a world now where you could do uber you could do lyft you could do all these side hustles YouTube, if you have enough subscribers and you have enough watch time hours, they pay you. Like, there's so many ways that you can make money nowadays. So you can do things to cover for your hobby. So again, make a budget. Number one, make a budget. All right, number two, content creation consumption. That is the marketing nowadays, guys. You got Instagram, you got um, TikTok, you got YouTube. That is the way of marketing nowadays, guys. And that's how people consume content. You gotta limit your content consumption. I've learned, especially in the last six months, uh, when my health was down, I severely limited my content consumption because now after I got better, as far as my physical health, my mental health was suffering and it created extreme anxiety. So I had to limit my content consumption. I've learned that limiting that has helped with my anxiety. Um, and it actually helped with my mental health. That creates anxiety when you're constantly seeing and shoved in your face. There's new products, there's new things that are coming out. And it doesn't matter if you're in the EDC world, it doesn't matter if you're in the knife world, it doesn't, car industries, uh, clothing lines, uh, there's so many different things out there. Everything is a product now. Everything is being sold, does not matter. Everything's being shoved in your face every second of every day. In the world of TikTok with all these videos, all you're having to do is scroll 
everybody is trying to sell you something. If you limit yourself to that, it really helps. I've even limited down my television intake on how much I actually watch TV and stuff like that. It also helps with spending more time with my family and my friends and having a social life. Um, it can become very easy to get sucked into that vortex on what's coming out and what's hot. I fell down that rabbit hole very easily and especially as a content creator, I was so hyper-focused on my channel and stuff like that to where I started neglecting my family and my friends. And then you could even go further than that and start neglecting your work, how you provide for your family and stuff like that. And, and it can create just huge problems for yourself. And that creates for a very unhealthy relationship with your hobby where it's taking the hobby to a, an extreme level to where it's not even fun anymore. Uh, and it starts creating problems in your personal relationships with people in your lives to where you're really staring at your phone just waiting for a product to drop and stuff like that. Um, get off your phone. Limit. Um, the best way I have found to do that as well is if there is a product that I am really, really wanting, I sign up for the email notification and that is it and they email me when it's going to drop. So I get the email notification, I know when it's gonna drop, I set a remind me for it. Most places have that now, especially on Instagram, you click the remind me, it reminds you before the drop happens and then when the drop is going on. And then boom, I go on there, I order it, and then I'm done. I don't have to keep going back on social media or anything. So it severely limits my content consumption and I'm not constantly hyper-focused on social media and uh, it started alleviating a lot of anxiety that it was giving me. Um, I, I think that is a huge problem nowadays and it can become very unhealthy for people uh, where they start neglecting their everyday lives because they are hyper-focused on knives, EDC gear, and just getting caught up in what's hot, what's coming out. And, and it's nothing... I don't think anybody does it consciously, it's subconsciously, and it doesn't happen overnight, but it happens, and it could, it could become very bad very quickly. So again, number two, moderate your content creation, like consumption, on all social media platforms. Set a limit, so you, and we have these things on our phone where we can set timers. So that way you put your phone down and then you can actually spend time with your family. I do this thing now where every evening I go out in the evening walk with my family and I leave my phone at home. I don't bring it with me. I leave my phone at home so I'm not tempted to look at my phone and scroll on Instagram and stuff like that. Um, that way it just creates a better mind space for me and I'm getting to spend one-on-one -on -one time with them without getting distracted uh, by everything on social media. So again, number two, moderate your social media and content creation consumption. Number three, guys, and this one's probably the most important one, FOMO, the fear of missing out. This is a huge one for me. And this is a huge marketing tactic by a, a lot of companies. If you don't get this one, get them before they're gone, because this would be the last time that they're gonna be available. That's bullshit. Don't listen to stuff like that, guys. I'm telling you right now. Anything that sells out in one minute or 30 seconds is going to sell out again. Do not fall for that crap. Don't do it. Anything that sells out like that will come again. It may not come in the next you know, month. It may not come out in the next six months, but it will come out again. It may not come out in the same configuration, but it will come out again. Do not fall for that. That fear of missing out is what I see a lot of people, and then they impulse buy. They can't afford it, they impulse buy, and then they gotta turn around and they sell it, and then they gotta take a hit on the secondary market, and then they just lose money. Don't do that, guys. I, I have done that so many times because I did not wanna miss out on something. And the thing is, once you don't do that the first time, Hold on just a second. My kid's coming out. <laughs> Sorry about that. My kid wanted to watch uh, Mickey Mouse. <laughs> Anyways, 
Where was I at? Oh yeah, FOMO. Anyways, what I found was that when I stopped doing that, the very next day after I didn't buy the thing, right, the product that I just absolutely had to have, the very next day, that anxiety that, oh my God, you know, it, it's going to be gone. It was, but I didn't care. I didn't care that that fear was gone. And yeah, I saw the people's posts on Instagram and stuff like that. And it lasted about a week, but then it was over and that pressure was relieved. And then each time something like that happened, it just got easier and easier to deal with. And then over so much time, it didn't bother me anymore. So <clears throat> that's kind of my tip to deal with that. Just refrain from doing it. And then over time, it just, it gets easier. It gets easier and you'll see it. You'll see people post for about a week or two. And then it just, over time, it doesn't even bother you anymore. So that is number three tip. The FOMO, the fear of missing out. Don't fall for the marketing tactics of people going, you know, this is, you know, your last shot to get this. You're never going to see it again, whatever. Don't fall for that. Just don't because it, that's a marketing tactic to get you to buy. Uh, don't fall for that crap. So number three, FOMO. All right, guys, this is my last tip. Number four, enjoy and carry what you got. I have a lot of expensive gear. I got a lot of really cool gear that I've spent a lot of money on. And most of the gear that I've carried, the people and the makers behind that gear did not make that gear to be carried for a week and then be put in a drawer and never carried again. They were made to be used and enjoyed and carried for a lifetime. There's knives that I own that will outlive me. There's products that I own that will outlive me. They were made to be carried and enjoyed and loved, you know? And I feel like a lot of people, myself included, don't give the products that we have the time or enjoyment that they deserve. And that was a huge thing when I stopped doing uh, YouTube was I started actually carrying the gear that I had. I sold a lot of my collection, 90% of it, and actually carried what I had. And I started to enjoy what I had a lot more. And I got more appreciative over what I had a lot more. And that was a huge thing for me. Um, I just started to really, it helped me with my my spending habits. It helped me mentally. It helped me in, in a lot more ways than one. And um, it created a more healthy relationship with my hobby. I still love buying gear. I still love trying new things. But I do it at a more healthy, I do it at a more healthy mindset. Give me just one second. Sorry about that. People are like yelling behind me. I didn't want them to over talk what I was saying. But anyways, uh, yeah, I started to enjoy my stuff more because I was giving it more time. I was spending more time with the gear. Um, I used to be a big hater on the Sabenza and Chris Reeve knives, and now I really like it. Don't get me wrong. I'm not like a Chris Reeve fanboy or anything like that, but I really like it because I've been carrying it pretty much every day for six months, and I really like the knife as a knife. And a big indicator of that was because of Ben with Jack Wolf Knives. Uh, I carried a slip joint. Uh, I just, I, I, I sold uh, like three of them. I had seven of them. I sold three and I kept four. And I rotated between those and those were mainly what I carried. Uh, because I, I kind of got out of the whole, you know, drop shut action stuff. And I just carried a slip joint. I went back to my roots. What got me into EDC and I carried slip joints. And that was kind of the motivational thing to get me to buy a Chris Reeve knife. And um, anyways, uh, I've been carrying a Chris Reeve and I've been really enjoying it for the past six months as an everyday carry. So yeah, and I just feel like most people nowadays will buy a knife 
they will carry it for a week, post their pictures up on Instagram, and then take cool photos, put it in a drawer, and then it never sees the light of day again, and sell it a year later. And it's just not getting the pocket time and the love and enjoyment that it was meant to, you know? And, um, and then it's on to the next thing, and on to the next thing, and on to the next thing. And that's, I mean, that's cool if that's how you want to do your hobby. I'm not going to sit there and tell anybody how they should do their hobby. And uh, people have more disposable income than others. So if that's how you want to do your thing, that's cool. But um, that's not how I do my stuff anymore. I'm more picky about my purchases now. Um, I also try to support the maker behind the product as well. Uh, if I'm really vibing with the maker, I try to support the, the maker behind the product as well. Um, that's a huge thing for me nowadays too. So um, that's part of the reason why I've been buying a lot of Nice Guy Machine Co. products here lately. I'm a huge pry bar fan, but I really like Archie as a person. So um, that's why I support his company. I just bought a Devo Knives uh, Nip Light. Um, that's because I love Kevin. Kevin's one of my best friends. I love him. It left the ADC. Shout out to you, Kev. But uh, yeah, guys, I just, I really wanted to do this video for a long time. And I hope this reaches people. And I just wanted to do this video to help somebody out there have a healthier relationship with the EDC hobby. It can be healthy and it can be fun at the same time. And that's what we're here to do. And we're here to conversate, talk knives, talk gear, and have fun with one another. But do it in a healthy way to where it's not causing problems and, you know, giving you problems. It, it shouldn't be giving you anxiety or giving you uh, stress or anything like that. That's not what it should be. This is this is supposed to be a happy place. It's supposed to be somewhere where you, where you come to be happy and give you enjoyment. And if it doesn't do that for you, then something's wrong. And that's the reason why I'm making this video. But anyways, that's going to do it for this one, guys. I hope you guys have a fantastic day. I hope you guys have a fantastic Labor Day weekend. And I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.